So out of the three scenarios, who's addicted? Someone who smokes every day for a year. Someone who smokes once a week for a year. Someone who smokes once a week for a year. Who's addicted? أعوذ بالله الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم welcome to the Safi Bros podcast الحمد لله available on all podcast platforms and of course on YouTube الحمد لله we are releasing every second Friday at 3 p.m. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode please subscribe because it helps us to produce more content and reach more people and it allows you to get each episode as soon as possible الحمد لله today we have a very special episode we would like to welcome an amazing brother who's flown down from Sydney for this, Brother Dean Musad. Brother Dean Musad, mashallah, uh, spearheads Invictus Solutions, counseling, mentoring, workshops, uh, also a founder of Brothers in Need, feeds the homeless, soup kitchens, mashallah, we can keep going all day, youth <laughs> programs, part of Project Quran, Allahu Akbar, of course, um, a web-based distribution of over 40,000 Qur'ans. Uh, and mashallah also provides a national support network for the brothers and sisters who are making shahada and uh, from what I hear 150 people have made shahada since October last year mashallah through that project mm-hmm. mashallah Allahumma barik assalamu alaikum to brother Musad assalamu alaikum wa welcome to the Musad assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh how are you gentlemen <laughs> alhamdulillah alhamdulillah <laughs> thank you for having me and thank you for the burger nah it's a naked wrap man mashallah hit the spot Allahumma barik there you go we're getting some alhamdulillah Burgers, don't worry, the burgers come as package deal. <laughs> <laughs> That's what bought him here, really, to be honest. That's right. <laughs> somebody, somebody, on that, somebody asked me, how'd you get Walid Ali? I said, I gave him a burger. <laughs> yeah, the rest is history. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> so welcome, brother. Mashallah, uh, you are doing a lot in the community, mashallah. Uh, mashallah, you do a lot of workshops, and subhanAllah, we cross paths. Uh, and here we are today, subhanAllah, inshallah, telling your success story. Mm-hmm. And alhamdulillah, as we know, success means so different to so many different people. So, inshallah, we'd love to start with your story. Tell us, tell us, uh, tell us about Dean. Who is Dean, brother? Dean. Allah barik fiq. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Thank you very much once again for having me and giving me the opportunity to uh, tell my story. Alhamdulillah, there's not too much interesting about Dean, but uh, yani to uh, talk a bit about the, the story of Dean, alhamdulillah. Uh, young Egyptian fella, alhamdulillah, so I'm 34, turning 35 this year. Uh, alhamdulillah, had a good uh, environment growing up, had good family, alhamdulillah, good support Always network. Always in Sydney? Always in Sydney, born and bred in Sydney. Born and bred in Sydney? Born in Paddington, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah, born in Paddington Women's Hospital. <laughs> <laughs> How many in the family, bro? Uh, my brother and I, man, so two. Two boys? Yeah, I think Egyptian you're the family oldest? very small. Yeah, yeah you're the oldest. Oldest. the oldest. Yeah. Okay. So, alhamdulillah, we... Um, when did mum and dad come to Australia? Ooh, how, how did they man. get here, man? What made uh, come to Australia out of all places? Is the land of the free, bro, and the land of opportunity. So, uh, yeah. alhamdulillah, dad, I think, came when he was 14. Mum came when she was 7, 8. Wow. So they came very young, in the 70s, I believe. Came in the 70s, man. Oh, wow, so dad yeah. came very young. Yeah. Got married yeah. here? Got married here, yeah. Oh, got married wow. here tomorrow. So two different Egyptian families united to produce you. Yeah. That's right, man. <laughs> both, they, man. They were both imports. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> alhamdulillah. <laughs> So, Hello, uh, well. yeah, man, alhamdulillah, uh, grew up in Oz, grew up in Sydney, uh, my whole life, alhamdulillah, uh, standard, uh, I guess, uh, education, just like everyone else. Schools, which schools did you go to? I went to a lot of schools, man, don't yeah. ask me why I went why? to five, six different schools, man, I uh, wasn't expelled? always, uh, <laughs> story for another day, man. <laughs> Dean, the troublemaker. <laughs> there you go, man, that's the, the, the highlight. They're, for the... they're heading for the real. <laughs> So you went to a few schools. I went to a few schools. Tell us, tell us about that. It's very important for some of these kids because, because we we, we want to get that that story so people yeah. people can relate with your story. And a lot of our kids today are not not fitting into the school system and yeah. really don't want to do that. So take us through it. So uh, kindergarten to year two went to Cherrybrook Public School. Right. So I used to live in the Hills District majority of my life. Uh, and Alhamdulillah, which yeah. is not very Muslim. Yeah, all Anglo-Saxons back then. Now, alhamdulillah, there's a bit of movement there. So a lot more Muslims are going out there. Kellyville, Stanhope, you know, Rouse Hill and the, the region. I'm in Greenacre now. But so back to uh, education. So I K to 2, Cherrybrook Public. Alhamdulillah, nice Aussie school. Uh, year 3, I went to Hills Grammar. So uh, Hills Grammar, there wow. year 3, obviously, didn't last there for too long. And uh, so we moved on to uh, Oatlands Public School from year 4 to 6. 
So three schools in the span of K to six, right? Wow. Uh, what 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 was that didn't work? What, what you know those kids, man, those report cards, bro. They have um, uh, got potential, 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 but very distracting, very distracting. Distracts the kids, mm. right? Likes to have a laugh, you know, little class clowns. Subhanallah. So that was a common theme uh, for me growing up. You know, oh, like wow. to uh, make people laugh. Alhamdulillah, uh, probably the wrong place at the wrong time. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, man, just uh, Subhanallah. Whenever I get comfortable, I'd slip up, and Subhanallah. Uh, be on to the next school. Wow. Uh, but alhamdulillah, there were good experiences in the K to six years. And then uh, year seven to 10, I went to a uh, Muslim school. So the first engagement with a Muslim school, and that was uh, our Faisal College in Auburn. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, but the unique thing about us at the time, we were the first year seven, the first year eight, the first year nine, and the first year 10. So we were wow, the first the cohort. First the, the newest oh. cohort. Wow, subhanAllah. So we were the guinea pigs. The guinea pigs, yeah. right? <laughs> the test case. Test That's right. Case. <laughs> Is it going to work? <laughs> <laughs> but we got Dean in there. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he can work at all, man. Six, <laughs> what, was the, what was the criteria? Six kicked out of six. That's four? right. <laughs> I, <laughs> subhanAllah. So, alhamdulillah, that was good. It was a good environment, right? So it's something that I needed, right? Mm. So seven, uh, seven to ten, good environment. East Islamic studies is always first or second, first or second from Lord. 7 to 10, alhamdulillah. And then because I didn't have approval for 11 and 12 at the time, we left. So all of the kids in year 10, after they finished year 10, they had to move on because they didn't have approval for the 11 and 12 cohorts at the time. Oh, wow. So boom, imagine now a taking hurt. a lion out of that cage, right? Opening the cage and year 11 and 12 for me, no good. Wow. So back at Falata, subhanAllah, uh, went to a public school uh, in North Rocks. So which is completely also a non-Muslim area. Non-Muslim area, pretty much next door to Borkham Hills where I grew up in, so Anglo-Saxon area. And imagine an Islamic environment, you 7 to 10, then subhanAllah, 16, 17 years old, 18 years old, non-Muslim environment. Can I ask, can I ask something? Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, alhamdulillah, we've all had, I've got four boys and I've put them for Islamic, you know, schools and, I want to ask this question. Mm. Now, you've gone four years at Islamic school. Why didn't that stay with you? Mm. It's a key for me because, because I see a lot of kids yeah. finishing year 12, hitting uni, yeah. and they lose the plot. Yeah. Why isn't that deen or that terbeyu, mm -hmm. if you want to call it? Because there's not much terbeyu happening there. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah where it's not sticking with our kids. Yeah. What happened with you? Just so you, I can relate, yeah. so the kids can relate. It's a good question. So I'm going to speak about my context. Yeah, of yeah, course. Everyone's, yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone's context is different. Yeah, yeah, of course. But for me, what I think it was, I think there was a fear factor growing up in my household. So very strict father, right? And then when you hit that age 16, you're moving on to 17, 18. Uh, in this country, anyway, everything's legal at the age of 18. You can make your own choices. You grow up physically a bit more. So you start to rebel. And so I think changing environment, starting to work, having a bit of money, a bit of freedom, uh, I turned to be a bit more of a rebel. Mm. And so for me, there was no more fear and I could do what I want, when I want, how I want. And that for me, I think was the cause of my demise. So now instead of having a controlled environment, Subhanallah. open environment, can do what you want, when you want, no more. So the handcuffs are off. That's it. In my head, anyway. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. No, 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 one no, hand cast, another set of hand cast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. Like, that's, 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 that's so powerful. It's, it's so, so true. Yeah. So because, because I see a lot of kids, like you said, the, you know, the handcuffs of the heart, yeah, like you said, the, the handcuffs on the hand or the heart is the two, uh, two subhanAllah, different. Yeah, but I'll, I'll like better because I appreciate you sharing that because yeah. a lot of kids are going through this journey, bro, and I want, I want, I want uh, to them to familiarize with your story, inshallah, so we, they can learn and not make the same mistakes, inshallah. Yeah. That's why I ask. Habib. Nah, sorry, mm -hmm. Habib. And so for me, like reflecting on that, right, on the, I guess, the way I was brought up with my own daughter now, who's four and a half, but then also with the community work that we do, and then reflecting on the story of the Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you never see that fear was a tactic when it came to the nurturing of community, the nurturing of the household. Right. And unfortunately, maybe we, I think we might be similar generation or so, right? Maybe that was the way of our parents, right? right. Fear, 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 no love, no hope. So you're like, Maji, yalla, <laughs> I'm, I'm raya, raya, right? Yeah. So yalla, might as well go and have fun along the way. Yeah. Uh, so, so now so it's true. about that love, connection, 
hope. There's also fear and there's got to be parameters and boundaries. Right? So you don't want to go from this extreme to this extreme now. Yeah, 100%. You want to find the balance somewhere in the middle. Yeah. And oh. so Alhamdulillah, then yeah. 11 and 12. So 11 and 12 are tough time for you. Mm, tough very us. tough. Alhamdulillah. Tough, tough. Did you, tough. Did you finish your 12? I did, alhamdulillah, surprisingly. So I finished year 12 in, uh, in Muirfield High School. So that was a school in North Rocks. And then that's when I turned 18, man. And then in the land of the free, right? Like that's, that's it. Before we go to the land of free, uh, <laughs> the land of the milk and honey. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so tell us about some really tough situations as, in you know, 11 and 12. So uh, saying tough, I think I'd love to have some context. Mm. Tell us a story. So, all right. So unfortunately, right, and we're speaking about this from a position of remorse and regret and not, uh, you know, to glorify alhamdulillah. Of course, alhamdulillah. Yeah. Uh, so that change of environment led to perhaps me having a girlfriend. So I had a girlfriend at the time, unfortunately engaged in very risk-taking behaviors with the girlfriend at the time. Uh, and so that led down a, a particular uh, path where, you know, one isn't, you know, subhanAllah, super happy of those, you know, um, out of marital relationships and, you know, what comes with that. Yes, okay. yes, so okay. many of our youth are going through that today. Oh, yeah. As we know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and and so so there, there you are, you know, going down that, that road because subhanallah we we put these blinkers on don't we we just, just keep going we forget yeah and, and so so what what was it that opened up the blinkers let's say from from that perspective that for you mm. so i think those particular behaviors and i'll talk more about it throughout the podcast it, it kind of escalated right so it escalated from initially and we, we know people know me through the talks that i do around pornography addiction right so it starts off with pornography starts off with masturbation that escalates right so then that now you don't want to just see it the behavior escalates so yeah. then you engage in the real thing yeah. subhanallah yeah, that's a seed yeah yeah it you is a seed. the seed once you plant that seed the the, the tree starts growing yeah there, yeah. You know? yeah yeah and subhanallah the apples are the product of going finding someone isn't it yeah. really yeah and so with pornography and drugs, they say they're different, right? So drugs, you want more. Pornography, you want different, mm, right? So that yeah. escalates now. Gives variety, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So you need the variety That's factor. Correct. Yeah, yeah. And so that starts with that, you know, kind of behavior with, with, with the girlfriend at the time. Uh, those behaviors escalate, right? <clears throat> and then that leads to when you turn 18. So I had a girlfriend from about 16 or so to about 18, 19. Uh, turbulent relationship with her. So that led to a lot of... Um, suicidal ideation from her end wow nice. so when one wanted to break that off yes 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 well, uh, I've, heard, I've heard that many times i've heard that i've heard i've heard many many stories of that a lot of our muslim brothers like they get to know a sister or get to know a young lady and then suddenly you know suddenly somebody cares for them somebody sees them as somebody special they've never had that kind of attraction and suddenly mm. ooh, i am i am worthy of somebody liking me or loving yeah. me from a different sort yeah. of perspective yeah, yeah. and suddenly they know it's wrong but then they they sort of exercise the sort of uh, the yeah. thought, yeah. and then suddenly you go, but you know now, well you know, mom and dad are going, hold on, you know, you know you're doing wrong, and you know that, yeah, you know, mom is telling you, you know that it's wrong, but you're sort of stuck in this sort of emotional imbalance, and then when you want to get out, suddenly she tries to commit suicide or yeah, she tries yeah. to harm herself, yeah. and suddenly you feel that attraction or there's that emotion that's connected to it, so you go, you can't leave it because you yeah, feel yeah. somehow. You know, it's my fault. That's right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Allah Akbar. And it's not the first time I've heard these stories. Uh, so many of our youth are dealing with this emotional attachment with that person, yeah. but also the emotional attachment is grabbing you back with your parents or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the deen. Mm -hmm. and, and where do you break that? And how, what was that breaking point for you? Where was it? Where, how did that? <laughs> like, and that's kind of law. Like, this is, where, this is the hardest thing, isn't it? Really, is that how do you break that bond? Yeah. Because we, we're, and I know so many brothers that couldn't break that bond. And, you, yeah. you know, we know yeah. so many of our brothers That's right. that went down that road. And 100%. we say it ends up divorce, ends up yeah. bad families. Their kids are, Allah, Allah, nobody even knows because, you know, the mom took them and they're no longer Muslims. Yeah. You know, we know many of those stories, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, SubhanAllah. So what broke that? How did you break that chain? And what was it that, you mm. know, that you used or, or, or that was a powerhouse for you inshallah so look initially then like you know so from 60 so i was i was going out with his sister for about three years right for two years right from 16 to 18 is like there was a connection there and we wanted to maintain that connection that relationship we wanted to change that right at around 18 years old so for that year there were four touch points from her side around suicide Allah. so there was uh two overdose uh panadol Allah. there was um Slitting of her wrists, 
and then trying to jump out of the car on a freeway. Allah. And so that year was a challenging year, right, from 18 to 19, right, because I wanted to end it, wanted to stop it. But then every time one would try and do so, she would come back with one of these attempts, right? How, how did that make you feel, honestly? Bro? It was a cocktail of emotions, man, to be honest with you. Um, a bit of sadness, a bit of hurt, a bit of upset. You know, obviously you did spend a bit of years with someone that, you know, you, you genuinely enjoyed, you know, to spend time with. But then at the same time, I felt like a hostage, right? I couldn't get out when wow. I wanted to. Then you're confused, you right? Consult? Did you speak to anybody? Well, no, man, because Mom, Dad, nothing, they knew? nothing. Yeah, nothing. so they knew that I was engaging in these behaviors, right? They weren't obviously condoning it or encouraging yeah, it. Obviously. And so the same kind of conversations, like you were saying, Dean, we didn't bring you up to be like this, you know, so then you're having those kind of thoughts in your head. I'm a bad person. I shouldn't be doing this. I've got different ethics and values, but then I'm, you know, wow. kind of pulled from here and there. Uh, to I just made the cut and I was like, you know what, like, okay, what was it? What was it? Bro? What was it that, you know, like, uh, subhanAllah, like, uh, and, and, uh, and I've had these discussions with brothers and I like to know what possessed you to go bang. Yeah. Because it's most of the times I've noticed it's like cold turkey. Mm. It's like, and, and I'm only like, yeah, that's, yeah. It, that's it. I've made up my mind. It's yeah. not going to change. Yeah. Yeah. But what was that thought pattern that you had that inshallah we can invoke in our brothers and sisters, you know? So look, my dad's very, um, very logical individual, may Allah reward him, right? He's, uh, he's actually 69 today, we were saying, right? Yeah, Allah. Allah. <laughs> Allah. 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 So, uh, I mean, I mean, man. So he's, he's good value. Uh, he always taught me, he taught me many principles in my life, which alhamdulillah, you know, uh, there's been a lot of yani khair in them. And one of them is, there's pros and cons, right? There's pros and cons, right? <laughs> the if we be fair. <laughs> one of them is, think with your head, not with your heart. Mm. And so towards the end of that journey, I was like, you know what, I gotta disconnect. I gotta snap out of this, right? I can't keep being a victim to every time I say I'm gonna leave, something happens from her. Wow. And that was it in my head. I was like, okay, that memory came. Dad said, leave, you know, think with your head, not with your heart. That's it, done. Oh, wow. So I had to become a bit heartless, mm. unfortunately, at that moment. Oh, yeah. I had to kind of look, for, look out for the self. Cut yeah. the emotions, yeah. That's right. Uh, now, it has pros and cons, right? So if I was to be honest, um, with most of my engagements in society, it is very think with your head, not with your heart. So the pros are you can manage people better, manage organizations better, manage systems better, get stuff done. You put the emotion to the side, right? And I'm mm. sure as both brothers, mashallah, are very affluent in business, you, you know, there might be some relatability there. 100%. But um, when it comes to the emotions, sometimes the people closest to you, they miss out. Yes. To yeah. say your yeah. wife, your kids, Right, they may not get the hundred percent emotional side yeah, you're from right. you. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. So then so, you have so your own true. challenge, right? Yeah, so true, man. Yeah. Good so point. good point, Allah. It's been a work in progress, right? So for yeah. me, like I engage in a lot of personal development every month. I allocate a lot of my money towards PDs every month, right, to become a better individual, mentally, yeah. emotionally, physically, spiritually, oh. socially. Yeah. And this money spent. Yeah, hundred percent. Because the way I look at it is like this, right? If I'm functioning at 30%, 40%, 50%, I want to function at 100%. So if I'm not functioning there, then how can I get myself there. at the 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 Inshallah. so I can give myself more, my family more, the world more? Inshallah. So you got to look yeah. in. Yeah, self-investment is, I think, you know, subhanAllah, we only have time and how we use that time to invest in ourselves first. And I, I hear a lot of brothers, as you know, we, we've spoken to brothers, you know, you know, how much are you investing in yourself? Because everyone yeah. says, oh, you know what? I want to do, uh, I want to be an influencer. Yeah. I want to get out there and spread the message. You know, we have a brothers, just watch a few videos, get motivated. Yeah. You know what I mean? A bit of uh, YouTube here, <laughs> and a bit of TikTok here. Yeah. But bang, I, I want to do this. Oh, brother Dean is doing this amazing stuff. You know, I can do it too. Yeah. The thing is, they, they lack to invest in themselves. It's like brother Dean has invested so much in himself to get here today. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and it's not going to happen at 18, 19, 20. You know what I mean? SubhanAllah, mashallah, that's, that's a very, very valid point that self-investment is, is so powerful. I mean, yeah. I mean. So SubhanAllah, the head, think with your head, not with your heart. Serve me good for a period of time and then not so good, right? So once again, when you get married, you have kids, SubhanAllah. Like, okay, well, now I need to make sure that I break out of that because mm. if I do the same that was done to me downwards, right, with my children, mm. then that unfortunately might keep rolling on generation to generation. So you got to be very conscious. Like I've been very conscious. Okay, how do I give my daughter the love that she needs? Oh. 
Because if I don't give her that love, when, when she hits her teenage years and the healthy male role models in her life didn't give her that, who do you think is going to give that to her? Like mm. we were talking before. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> like, hey, you know, uh, you you got beautiful eyes. <laughs> <laughs> you finished. She, she built in his hands. <laughs> we lost our, we lost our yeah. daughter. Yeah. 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 It, it happens yeah. a lot. As we yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. We see that a lot in our business, you know what I mean? A lot of, a lot of because alhamdulillah, we employ a lot of Muslims through our businesses and we see a lot of our sisters that, that come here and work for us, you know, that they haven't been given that reassurances. Like, you know, they come in caked up with makeup, some yeah. of them. You know what I mean? You can see that lack of yeah, this, it's called self-belief. Street smart. You, you know what I mean? Give him some street smart. And suddenly, yeah. you know, you say to them, Mashallah, why do you need this sister? You, you know, honestly, why? And then you, you just put a mirror in front of their face. And suddenly they say, oh, I don't like what I see. And suddenly you tell them, Mashallah, you are, you know, Mashallah, you're a Muslim. You know, you love Allah. You know, you're trying to work. Look at this, you know. You should, don't you love yourself? And then, inshallah, when somebody starts loving themselves and seeing themselves yeah. truth, you see that suddenly they don't look for that, you know, I need I need you to confirm this, you know. Yeah. There's no need for confirmation anymore from our, from these brothers. That's right, yeah. yeah. SubhanAllah, yeah. May Allah bless you. It's, yeah, good. it's so powerful to know this with our kids as well, males and females. That's right. Because we see that with the boys as well. You know, like I've had, I've got staff here that, you know, we, you know, I give the boys a very big hug, you know. Yeah. And it's like they, they melt in your hugged. hand and they say, oh, yeah. well, nobody's ever hugged me. Yeah. You know? Not like that before. Yeah, like that. Right. And, and, and it's, a, it's a truthful Honest, you know what I mean, and and we've been conditioned that when you connect with somebody emotionally, it's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> As yeah. well, there's yeah. another thing, you know that's what right. I mean. So you yeah. know, these boys are trying. Oh, wow, that, that that that's real. Subhanallah, you know. Yeah. Subhanallah. Allahumma so we'll take us back. You're 18, and you've cut ties, and yeah. now you're free, sort of. Yeah. So it, it didn't have the. It actually escalated and got even worse. Wow. All right. So for me, uh, 18, land of the free license you got everything now you can go into any you know institution any venue that you want no questions asked uh, and then subhanallah you know because i started to engage with more girls after that relationship breakup so i didn't really go back to religion well, at that mm. point right because of all of the turbulence there i needed an outlet so mm. i started to engage in nightclubs i started to go out into uh you know the world of uh, entertainment well wow. and Instead of just girls now, it's girls and then, you know, they want to get loose a bit. So let's have a couple of drinks. Wow. Let's have a couple of drinks. Little starts. Let's have a little slap, right? So then gambling now comes into the mix. So now you've gone from one vice from maybe, you know, pornography when you were 16 to girlfriend, to girlfriend, to alcohol, or alcohol, to gambling, gambling, to around... 21 drugs. Wow. And it just, it escalated. It's a gateway, isn't it? It's just a gateway after gateway after yeah. gateway. Yeah. And it's amazing how many of our brothers and sisters, like, they don't understand that, you know, Khutawat al Shaitan are steps. That's they, right. they, they, he doesn't open the world to you. He just uses one step at a time. Mm. Like, that's it. Yeah. I got plenty of time for this. He's only that's 19, right. he's only 18. Yeah. By the time I'm 21, I'll get him. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's okay. I'm yeah. going to get him through these little steps. You know what I mean? And, and also, you know, subhanAllah, going forward is a step. But going backwards is a step too, yeah. step by step. You know, you go, go cold turkey and everything. Yeah. It's like, you're going to relapse. That's right. So, you know, is that, you see, he's coming yeah. down with five, six problems. Let's relive one at a time. That's right. You know, subhanAllah, you know. So, 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 so take us there. What was the lowest moment, you know, that you've had, you know, through that, mm. you know, because undoubtedly we know for a fact that when we go through that process, all we're doing is finding the other fix to give us the emotional, you know, satisfaction within our own selves to somehow forget all, or forget, mm. you know, yeah, forget yeah. and forgive in a way. The forget, so the, you know? the forget one is is, is such yeah. a. And so, the, so, so, so there's no doubt about it. Like we 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 intoxicate ourselves through women mm -hmm. and through all these means yeah. you know, uh, purely to because we know we we're sort of stuck in this. We we're back in the shackles. We've got the handcuffs on. That's right. And we can't get off. We can't get out. And we want to forget. And I see so many of our brothers and sisters that you know. And you know, look, the end of the day, it's about. I don't want to be here. Yeah. But tell us about, you know, uh, some re really like, w where were those moments that you, you thought, you know, well, mm. I don't know, I'm, I'm stuck. I can't get out. It's it's all over. And like, you know, undoubtedly we all have them. We all have those yeah. uh, in undisputed low moments, I call. So there was, a, there was a few of them, right? So around, go back 18, I had a, a big car crash at the time. 
uh, turned a Land Cruiser at the time into a little charade. Wow. Uh, and subhanAllah, I only came out with a, like a little mini bruise at the time. Nothing. Wow. Literally went from this big to nothing. Mom's dua. Yeah, yeah, oh, mate. Mom's, grandma's, dad's, Allah. everything. Allah. 18, right? 18. And, I, I, and at that time, I wasn't drinking nothing. It was actually like a micro sleep. Oh, wow. Right, so I was actually no drink driving at the time. I had a micro sleep. Wow. And then the ambulance came. They're like, where's the guy, you know? Because I, I, like, when I hit the curb before I hit the tree, right? I started running, like hit the curb, hit the tree, boom, got out, ran down the highway. It was on uh, James Bruce Drive, wow. right? Coming onto Windsor Road exit. They're like, where's the owner of this car? I was like, that's me. They're like, no, 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 where's the owner of the car? I was like, that's me. Like, you should be dead, mate. Wow. It took me to hospital, right? Check me out, no, no internal bleeding. And I was thinking a bit, you know, well, what am I doing with myself? Where am I going? This is a life that I want, right? If, wow. it, you know, if nothing changes, nothing changes. Yeah, some questions there. And then, subhanAllah, shaitan, you know, boom, very fast, become heedless and, you know, back into the, uh, rut. Into the rut. And so at that time, I was working at the Reserve Bank. So after year 12, worked at the Reserve Bank of Australia for about three years. Wow. So there for three years, got a traineeship, apprenticeship, then boom, one year, two year, three year. You were the one money you was. Yeah, right? that's right, mate. <laughs> <laughs> money printing, <laughs> mate. <laughs> he's, he's not printing money. <laughs> Making money. <laughs> Legal tender. <laughs> Subhanallah. I was there. And then uh, the nightclubs, it wasn't just now um, attending the nightclubs. A lot of the promoters and event managers, you know, would try and scout me out. Hey, uh, we want you to work here. Mm, they could see the, the charisma. That's right. So, uh, yeah, but then, you know, I still had a bit of a curfew right at that time. So my dad, you know, when I first hit 18, he was like, yeah, okay, whatever, you're going to go out. You know, I'm not really encouraging it, but make sure that you're back by, you know, 9, 9, 10 to 10, 10. I wouldn't get home at 10. I get, you know, punished, Stretches. you know, boom, stretch, 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 you know, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock and what have you over the years. And then 21 happened. And that's kind of where it escalated even more. So it turned into, you know, a lot of drug consumption. Uh, and I kind of lived a very heedless life without giving too much thought too much from 21 to 24. No Muslim friends then? No. no. So after I left the Muslim school, because we all scattered, the 11 and 12, all non-Muslims, then 18 to 24, no Muslim friends. No Muslim. No Muslim friends. Wow, what an important. Yeah. So that's why I'm just saying from one environment to another, to another, to another, Allah. it was bad. Roller coaster. Yeah, and it escalated, right? So not just now going to a nightclub, you're going to the nightclub to work, you get free drinks, you get a free table, they drop your name on the door, they get free entry, right? You became the man. Yeah, and then that wasn't enough. So same as uh, music festivals, the concerts, right? The Stereosonics and all of these oh, big wow. events. Oh, wow, you're managing them. Yeah, so I wasn't managing it, but, you know, I found ways facilitating. into facilitating, yeah. you know, um, a good time, unfortunately, <laughs> or a good time in our mind back the, then. The, the ins and outs. Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. And then, we used to do Stereosonics. Yeah. 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 We used to, yeah, we used yeah. to manage events. Uh -huh. Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. yeah. Different. <laughs> we, used to, we, we used to feed you. We used to be the guys that fed everyone. Yeah. Stereosonic. Well, yeah. Stereosonic was huge. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's a big event. Huge. Yeah. We used to do yeah, that. Yeah. We used to, in fact, hydrate everyone through slushies. So. Uh -huh. There you go, the slushies, yeah. <laughs> they were your slushies, yeah, and our slushies. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mustan. Hello. And then that escalated to running my own boat cruises from about 21 to 24. Oh, wow. So we had our own boat cruises that we were running, uh, different kind of slushies there as well. And then for me, the real uh, change on my 24th birthday uh in that in that scene you you know you get a hotel you have your pre-drinks you have your pre-party then you have your during the party after party you book out a hotel <laughs> and subhanallah uh i had a knee-death experience i don't know another knee-death experience this one was an overdose now wow uh, alcohol drugs a concoction of everything got kicked out before midnight back then alhamdulillah like you're talking about 2013 november Social media, like it's not like social media today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So there was footage of me, but alhamdulillah, it's nowhere to be found now, right? But it was enough for me to see the boys had recorded stuff of me. And I woke up and I thought about it and I was like, hmm, okay, this is not on now, right? Like this is what's happened now. It's getting worse and worse and worse. You've just passed out. Everything's gone. You have no recollection of nothing. Sore body, your body's in pain. I thought about it and I was like, all right. Let's use, you know, you go with, think with your head before your heart, yeah. right? So if you started this from 16 and you're 24 now, there's a good eight years that you've wasted. 
if nothing changes, nothing changes. So if you're going to do this from 24 to 32, it's going to be the same, if not worse. The body gets older, right? It's not going to be able to withstand potentially what you were able to withstand, right? When you were younger. So then like for me, very fast, I started to think, okay, Dean, you need to change. And that was the beginning now of the change. Oh. Um, so that, so 24th. So, so we have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the mirror. So somebody mm. put a mirror in front of you and showed you who you truly are. Yeah. True. So that yeah. video content yeah. was your mirror, wasn't it? Yeah. So That's you right. saw who you were. You didn't like oh, this. Yeah. So you truly saw who you were. That's right. Where you haven't seen yourself. So, That's right. So if that person didn't record you, yeah. Can you imagine that? Like yeah. we're, 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 you know, it's such a powerful factor that, like I said before, yeah. the mirror, yeah? That's right. It's all about when you can see yourself. Mm. And the tr you truly see who you truly are. Yeah. Mm. And I think a lot of us are lacking. Yeah. We always look in external. We never look at ourselves. We've never stood in front of that mirror and said, who am I? What mm. do I stand for? What am I? What am I doing with my life? You know yeah. what I mean? And Subhanallah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and I, and I don't doubt Subhanallah. But it's I, always always part of that, you know. But I guarantee there's one thing that's I want to touch base because mm. I've, I've been that yeah. same path. Your parents would have been every time you came home, making dua, waiting there. Oh, he just got home. They went to sleep. Were they the kind of parents? Initially, initially, right? But then as they saw uh, the behavior escalate from 21 to 24, uh, I got kicked out. So that was another thing. I got wow. kicked out temporarily. Uh, so your dad said, that's it. I've had enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You reached a level that your dad right. didn't even. Yeah. Oh, well, even got so, yeah, yeah. Wow. You... Uh, and then, yeah. So, you know, no more waiting up. How long did you up. live outside of home? I was at my auntie's for a bit and then I went back home. Right, so auntie, oh. uh, you know, reconciled with my dad and I. Uh, the re relationship wasn't the greatest as well. So as well, you know, subhanAllah, there was no prayer. Unfortunately, there was like a lot of Islamic rituals wow. that I was involved in before were non-existent. Wow. Uh, till that age, right? Till the age of 24. Oh, wow. Losing losing your home, like losing, how did that feel? Losing, like getting, leaving home. Not, not being there with mum and dad. Like, mm. like honestly, how did that feel? Because we know so many brothers yeah. and sisters that are currently, yeah. that are not in home, not home. And yeah, um, yeah. I, I can name five right now yeah. of Muslim yeah. brothers and sisters that are currently being removed from their house yeah. because of the current circumstance that you, you went through. Yeah. How did you feel? Honestly, like, yeah. the, can you give us some, some of that real true emotion that you had in you, in you? Was it, was it, I don't care? Was it, I think at that point in time, it was, I don't care. So you, it kind of just got worse and worse and worse. Yeah. It's like, it was just, it was getting crazy. Like before you'd push the friendship, your dad would tell you one o'clock in the morning, you come home three, four. At that point, I wouldn't come home at all. I'd go out, bender two days, three days, hotels. So the behavior in every sense, we're keeping it PG oh. for the audience. Yeah. It, it escalated, wow. right? It escalated. So uh, there was a lot of that, I think, Maybe there was an element of care, but I masked it with, I was so busy with everything else, I didn't give myself too much time to think about mm. how I really felt. Yeah. So you, you kind of become numb That's so to true. all of this, right? That's, you see that, yeah. they, they want to keep themselves so busy That's right. not to think about That's right. the consequences. Yeah. Oh, you're so true. So at that point in time, wow. I, was, I, like, I used to work at a men's clothes shop, politics. You know, the, yeah, 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 politics. That's yeah, so. like the Gucci <laughs> <today>. right. <laughs> Just saying, who's the one who's right. <laughs> That's right. That we can afford Gucci. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we can afford uh, politics. Yeah. That's right. Uh, Roll up with the politics uh, top uh, right at the club. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> used to make money on the politics club. <laughs> <laughs> money in the club. So, uh, Allah, it, um, I just kept myself so busy, man. Wow. Working six days a week, and then parties. I used to work Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I used to work in the scene those days. Yeah. So just busy, 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 Pete busy. Repeat, until huh? boom, oh. that happened, yeah. And then that's kind of when those kind of moments were happening in my head. I was thinking, okay, Dean, if nothing changes, nothing changes. 16 to 24, 24 to 32. Wake up to yourself. What's going to happen? And then from there, I was like, okay, now you got to make some decisions in your life. Was the pain there? What did you see that day where you mm. saw yourself? Did the pain outweigh the joys the that you were having for those eight years? You know what I mean? Because mm. I, I always say, if you don't feel the pain, you'll never change. Because like, you know, it, it, we, we hit rock bottom somehow. We yeah. feel that yeah. unbelievable pain that, mm. you know, nobody can 
understand because yep. it's, pain is so different to every person. Right. Yeah, and yeah. and was it that pain that you felt when you saw yourself? Was it was it was it painful? Honestly, I think so. I do some work with a psychologist from time to time, right? Oh, wow. And so he tells me, Dean, uh, there's different attachment styles. So we all have different attachment styles. If you've got your uh, ang- uh, anxious uh, attachment style, you've got your secure attachment style, avoidant dismissive. So for me, I'm the, I fall in that avoidant dismissive. Mm. I dismiss all emotions. I'm avoidant of all emotions. And so when you ask me the question about feelings, I think still once again, it wasn't a feeling conversation. It was a thought, a logical conversation. So you took your dad's advice, gospel. That's Oh yeah. There's a few things that I took as gospel. Once again, there's pros and cons to them all, right? Uh, But for me, I don't think it was a feeling conversation. Wow. It was more of a logical one. So, so, you're, log- back. so you're a logic drive person, I, not emotional drive person. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. Interesting. And that's yeah. like on, on a lot of fronts, whether yeah. it's excitement, happiness, sadness, anger. Like for me, I, I, I think it's more consequential thinking, oh, right? Wow. I don't really think about the emotion there and then. Once again, there's pros and cons to it. Yeah. 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 No, 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 yeah. It's, it's just that uniqueness. Well, now, the reason I'm saying this, brother, truly, because the reason I'm thinking that way is because we do have a lot of brothers and sisters that – do not express any form of emotion yeah. because they, they purely go down the logic only. Mm. And we notice that that's the way they think, that's the way they, it, they attract, this the way they detract. Yeah. And, and, and some, yeah. other, some other people are just purely emotionally driven. Yeah. Some brothers yeah. are just, you know what I mean, that connection of emotion, stuff like that. Yeah. It depends on the person. That's so right. it's so important for them to know. Yeah. So when you know that you're driven logically, driven mentally, at least you you can work with that That's right. compared to you know yeah. the other the other side. So knowing so. how you operate is so powerful. Like you said, yeah. if you didn't speak to that guy and sort of give you that mm. determination of how you, yeah, you know, where would you be? That's right. You know, Allah Akbar. So alhamdulillah. I, I, that's why I'm sort of uh, yeah. going through that. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. So 24, the light yeah. bulb dropped and mm. flopped. That's what, right. What happened? Alhamdulillah, everyone's different. So even so as, a, as a registered counselor, I deal with a lot of addictions predominantly. So a lot of my work is around addictions wow. of all kinds. Drugs, alcohol, gambling, gaming, wow. social media, pornography, masturbation, anything addiction, right? That's predominantly what I work with right, in terms of wow. clientele. What would you class if a kid come up to you and said, oh, you know, I masturbate three times a week? Mm. Would that be... What would, you, what would you class as, yeah. as, as somebody that's got so an I'll give addiction? You a quick, I'll throw it back at you, right? So out of the three scenarios, who's addicted? Someone who smokes every day for a year, someone who smokes once a week for a year, someone who smokes once a week for a year, who's addicted? All. Uh-huh. Good, right? They're all varying levels of addiction, addiction yeah. right? And so for us... When a client comes through, the way we look at it is there's something called the Dawa medicinal approach. So when you see a GP, for example, the GP sees maybe six clients an hour, 10 hours a day, 60 clients a day. The, cl- the, the, the GP wouldn't give the same client, every client the same prescription. Mm. He'll kill them. If every single person comes in, he gives them the same prescription, they're finished. So he's got to go through a consult, he does his triage, he does his intake. Based off the questions, the answers, here's a prescription. If symptoms persist, come back to me in three, five, seven days' time. And so that's the approach I take with my clientele. The first couple of sessions, I unpack. And like you said before, right, one problem is easier to deal with than five problems. Mm. So as you dig and you start to realize there's problem after problem, problem after problem, Mm. sometimes clients seem in the beginning around one problem, and I've got them now for four, five, six years focusing on, on other issues now. Right, from childhood, from other experiences in their life, addictions, mental health issues, and so on and so forth. So from that moment, what dropped? I made a conscious decision. Not everyone's like this, right? So some people can take the cold turkey route. Yeah. Some people need yeah. lifetime commitment, mm-hmm. right, to you know trying to become sober. Yeah. And so some well, things I was able to give up cold turkey. You had the willpower. Uh huh. It's from Allah. I personally believe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just maybe part of what I went through, all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, little bits and pieces, right? Think with your head, not with your heart, perhaps, right? And a few other things I've learned along the way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed me to 
give up alcohol, give up drugs, give up gambling, give up zina in that month. Wow. Boom. Yeah. Bang, 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 bang. So you had a good weight killer. Oh, mate. Because right. <laughs> that's the reality yeah. is that the, the, the heart is attached to certain things. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because you remind me of the hadith of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. man came Salam. to him with those five problems. Allah. And the first one he said to him, stop lying. But that hadith, when I was reading it and dissecting it, the most important thing is do not lie to yourself. Mm. And that's what you stop doing. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what happened to you. That's why you were able to go cold turkey. Yeah. Because when you had a look at your heart self, you stopped lying to yourself. Mm. That's a good point. That's the key, I swear. Yeah. Because I'm, 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 same scenario, bro. Yeah. I went cold turkey. Yeah. And because I had the same situation, I had a hard look at myself. And I said to myself, Subhanallah, I stopped lying to myself. Yeah. I think it's it's a really important key yeah. that I want to touch base on yeah. because you remind me of the hadith because he came with the same very similar problems. Yeah. He goes from don't lie, do the rest. And everyone was shocked in that, in that yeah. advice because, like you said, every person requires difference. Yeah, subhanAllah. And sometimes, I mean, and sometimes, you know, in, in that particular case, maybe we were lying to ourselves with things that were haram. But sometimes we still lie to ourselves about things that are halal. Yeah. So for me, like if I was to be honest, right, and I'm sure lots of people in the audience might agree with this, when it comes to fajr, right, some of us, when we know we've got work straight in the morning, We'll get up for Fajr like this. And are we really getting up for Fajr or are we getting in because we know we're going to make one, three, five K that day? Mm. But what about the days where I don't have work in the morning? So I start to think, you know, okay, I was able to give up the haram, right, over a period of time. But what about the things that aren't haram that I'm still lying to myself about today? Mm. Oh my so you Very well. got to be intentional so yeah. constantly, yeah, right? Yeah. You know, being God conscious, right? So subhanAllah. Uh, drugs, Turkey, alcohol. How long did that take you? I reckon one month. One month, bang. I reckon one month. What was something month that was of November? You did that, you, that you believed that supported you? Environment, change environment, change friends. There were small changes in environment. So there was small changes in environment. So at the time, I told those individuals, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you call me, I don't pick up. So after that experience. Wow. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, because they're the dangerous nights in the week, right? <laughs> Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And literally, like Shayatin, they would call me. <laughs> right? SubhanAllah. Shayatin in Linz, right? <laughs> of course, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. They're there, brother. And they call me. And then, you know, because online you can see who's active, who's online, what have you, right? <laughs> Dean, your dog, you know, we're calling you, mate. Pick up. We can see you online. It's not happening, right? Then I call wow. on Monday. I told them, listen, I told you Friday, Saturday, Sunday, don't call me. They put parameters. Ah, wow. Which you have to. Yeah. Right? You got to be honest with yourself. You can't tell yourself, oh, look, I'm not going to drink anymore. I'll just mm. go for a drive. We'll go to dinner at, back then, Cronides or somewhere, Cockle Bay Wharf. I'll be fine. I'm not going to drink. Mm. Right? I'll just go for a feed. It's yeah, hard. brother, you're going to put yourself at Cockle Bay Wharf Saturday night. You're going to walk past Pontoon or wherever and you're finished. Oh, wow. Yeah, subhanAllah. And, and that's what the shaitan does. Yeah. He just says to you, just get close. You're not going to get That's right. Subhanallah, yeah. we see it so much. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, it's like, then you're not going there, but he'll yeah. get you somewhere close. That's right. Don't worry about that. That's right. Yeah. And Allah. And so I was able to give that up in that month. Alhamdulillah. I put those parameters in place. I started to then, boom, take it further. So snap the card, the SIM card, get a new number. Wow. Because sometimes, you know, I do with a lot of people. I do the same. Yeah, you have to. <laughs> a lot of brothers are like, yeah, but I've had this number for so long. But, you know, what happens if someone calls me for work? Mm. Yeah, all right. They might call you for work, but they might call you for something else. Yeah. Are you ready to run that risk? So sometimes you got to make the cut. cut yeah. So I started to make the cut. November 2023. Uh, 2020, uh, 2014, February, three months after, give or take. Umrah. Were you back home now? Uh, yes. So I was only out of home for a short period of time when I was around 21. Uh, stopped all of that. I started to go to the mosque once a week. So that was something from I started... Your, from your own? No. So I had another brother, subhanAllah, him and I Muslim. So he was Muslim. I never really, you know, used to go out with him. He used to work at industry. I used to work at politics in the same complex <laughs> in the same Westfields. <laughs> and we'd always see each other out and about. Hey, hey, what's happening? You know, do our little thing, right? And that, But he disappeared for about nine months. I never saw this guy again in the clubs. It was wow. like the last nine months before I stopped everything. So what happened to this guy? He started to send me messages, come to the masjid Friday. 
You know, you know how subhanAllah we're rolling these broadcast these people send us messages that do our head in, right? Like, should I block this guy? Should I mute this guy? I haven't asked him to put me on his broadcast list. <laughs> so he was like this. So whenever he'd send me a message, I wouldn't even open it. Wow. But something made me start opening his messages. And that's when I started to tell him, listen, I'll come join you. Wow. So once a week between Maghrib to Asha, I'd pray Maghrib, I'd pray Asha, I'd listen to the talk in between. And that was it. So he's had a part of it. So he, yeah, he's got a big part, bro. Oh, he's getting Hassanat. Oh, he's getting Hassanat. He, know, mate. he does. How long, he does. how long was he sending you messages for? I reckon, if my memory serves me correctly, a good six to nine months, wow. I would say. Boys, I would say. Guys, start sending messages. <laughs> <laughs> With their permission. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, no permission. Just send that. Six months, don't stop. <laughs> well, like, I want to touch, touch, touch on that. It that, worked. <laughs> yeah. I want to touch on that. That's such a small my new message could really change and profound and support our brothers yeah. and sisters. So just want to touch. That's why I actually want to it, 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 it doesn't happen in a vacuum, honestly. Yeah. It just doesn't happen in a vacuum. There has to be an external influence. Yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends people. When you are, I always say, when you are honest with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yeah, he sends his junud. Yeah. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send his mm. workers. He will send, yeah, yeah. he'll send you the message. And he'll keep yeah. on sending you. Because his mercy outweighs everything. That's right. And, and that's the reality is he wants to bring you into his mercy. Yeah. He wants you to he wants you to say. And, and subhanAllah, we we're talking about discussion yesterday. Last night I was having a discussion with some boys saying, Istighfar. It doesn't only happen, subhanAllah, by just saying istighfar. Istighfar is that true feeling internally. Mm -hmm where you have some kind of remorse or somehow feeling like, I've done the wrong thing, Ya Rabbi, forgive me. Mm. Truly, yeah? And when you truly have that internally, just verbally, it's, look, I'm not saying it's nothing wrong. you got to do the verb. you yeah. got to start verbally. But when it enters in your heart, mm. subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends the people to support mm. you in your istighfar. Yeah. You know? And, and subhanAllah, and I was at the yeah. boys, I said, boys, do you know that Allah tells you he's forgiven you for the wrongs you've done? They go, what do you mean? How is that possible? I said, when you haven't done it, Again. And when you know. do not go back to that haram, Allah's telling you, I've forgiven you because you never went back. But when you're going back to it, yeah. when you're going back to masturbation, when you're going back to pornography, when you're going back to all these things, understand Allah hasn't forgiven you. Mm. But He's still telling you, come, seek my forgiveness. And, and how many brothers are in the relapse world? You know, how yeah. many we say that are in the relapse, they'll do the wrong thing and they'll say, Oh, I feel guilty, you know, because that nafs at the moment, you know, there's the nafs al-ammara and yeah. there's that nafs, you know, al-lawama, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. one that looms itself. It does the wrong and it says, oh, fuck that. Yeah. Uh, uh. Yeah. I stuffed up. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's good yeah. to have that discussion because there's so many that we have, you know what I mean? Yeah. So subhanAllah, you, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Allahumma barik. You're right, man. So you, as you've touched upon a couple of the different nafs, right? You want to achieve that nafs al-mutma'inna. Amen. Because we're always kind of, you know, nafs al-lawama, nafs al-amara bisu, and it's a constant struggle, subhanAllah. Yeah. It is a daily struggle. Amen. Amen. So I always tell the team, like, always be intentional, right? Just always be intentional. Our intention needs to be renewed regularly, subhanAllah, because it's easy to, to just go on autopilot. Allah, yeah. So, um, so now you got a brother supporting you, he's, he's, he's telling you to come to the masjid, you started going on Friday. Yes, I started going to the masjid, alhamdulillah, and then I had another brother at the masjid tell me, Dean, you got to go to uh, Umrah, we're going to Umrah. So back then they were doing the khuruj, so when we all started, oh. subhanAllah, in some kind of tablighi oh, mosque, right? Wow. So, uh, Amazing. Alhamdulillah, I started off uh, at one in They're getting hasanat too. Oh, they're getting a lot of hasanat, bro. <laughs> they're pumping the da'wah. Who's ready, inshallah, right? <laughs> Form notepad and all. And <laughs> So the boys went on a 40-day khuruj to France. Wow. And then they've done a 21 day trip to Umrah. I told them, look, I'm not going to join you on the friends trip. It's a bit too extreme for me. Yeah, I mean, heck, I just came out of, uh, <laughs> I want to say where, and now you want me 40 days and wow. then 20 in Umrah. I said, I'll, I said, look, I don't know if I'm ready for Umrah. He's like, Dean, you're never going to be ready. Put the money down and just make it happen. Wow. I thought about it. The next day I came to him, I said, I'm ready. Allah, Allah loves you, bro. Allah. Oh, mate. What an invitation. And this at 24. At 24. That's right. Yeah. Subhanallah. And so I went February 2014, Umrah, 21 day trip. It cost me less than two grand. Wow. Less Best money invested. Oh, brother. But let me tell you, like, Shaitan was pumping me hectic now. Because oh. when you start to get on the path, <laughs> yes. he'll come from front, back, right, left. He'll try and ambush you, right? As Allah says in the Quran. So, Subhanallah. 
uh, why it was so cheap. Uh, that was everything inclusive, by the way, right? Oh. In Medina, we went Medina first. I think we went Medina for about a week and then Mecca for the rest of the time. Oh, wow. Medina, five star. Pullman Hotel, you're right in front of Masjid al Nabawi. You wake up in the morning, you hear that, and then you cross in your Masjid al Nabawi. But the other place that we were in Mecca, one of the boys, his dad owned a hotel. So we were like, hectic, you know what? We've got you know, two grand airfare, accommodation, food, you know, wrapped. You know, you won't get a holiday like this for less than two grand. <laughs> Mala reward the brother, but when we went to the hotel, I'm thinking hack the Hilton in my head. I'm thinking the Meriton apartments and all of those <laughs> good fancy hotels. We've gone from five star hotel in Medina to half a star wow. in Mecca. Nice, big battle, bro. Wow, but big battle. Alhamdulillah, I came from a family that you know. Alhamdulillah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given us everything. Yeah. So I've come from five star so my whole life to now boom Mecca, half a star. You're walking into the hotel. It's a big walk from the yes, from yes. the Kaaba. So you the outskirts. Oh mate, big walk. You're walking in the Valley of Death. You see these rubbish mounds coming into the hotel. Not bricks, rubbish, right? With cats all over them. Yeah. You're doing the walk up the stairs. You got six people in a room. Wow. It's not quad share. You're oh. talking about a triple double share. Oh, wow. <laughs> you got six people in a room. The the windows open, the aircon bah <laughs> right, no nice quiet aircon. You gotta put the blanket over your head because the flies are doing to off around your face. You don't want to swallow one when you're sleeping. Full hajar, bro. It was tough. Wow. And in my head, I'm like, bro, am I gonna be able to make this man? I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna eat. I'm gonna lose my marbles. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna what? Because it will either make you or break you. Wow. And we've had people that have gone to like, you know, different experiences like this, Khuruj, yeah. India, Bangladesh, Pakistan. And they come back worse. They come back worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So, yani, I kept on asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, please, you know, yani, thabitni, keep me sincere, keep me steadfast, keep using me, please, you know, because it's fresh on the journey. Wow. And alhamdulillah, I came back. And alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, yani, I stayed staunch. Uh, then for one year, from February 2014, to February 2015, started to do a bit more masjid instead of once a week, twice a week, right? Start to get a bit more involved. I was in a bit of debt, so I worked very hard that year, paid off all of my debt in the year, alhamdulillah. Uh, and then February 2015, my grandma passed away. And subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, put this special love me. And this is probably where there was an emotional connection to someone, it was my grandma. Allah. Not to the point where I was distraught, but there was like, if I could feel a connection, mm. I felt it with grandma. Why? The haniya, the love, no the, judgment, the, huh? the, judgment, yeah, the good environment. No judgment at all. Allah, beautiful. She'd give me nasiha. Yeah. I, we sit down, we play backgammon with her, we play cards with her. Uh, she had a, a place in the city, so whenever, you know, back when I was still, how you going? She's like, okay, come to the, you know, come stay at the, the place in the city. Just awesome grandma, subhanAllah. Allah. When she died, subhanAllah, I felt something, like emotionally. Uh, in in uh, Umrah, there was something, but it wasn't like, uh, some people were like, oh my God, and they're crying down in tears, you know. Mm -hmm. Some people, they have that effect. For me, I saw the Kaaba and the Sheikh would tell you, before you go in, keep your eyes down. When you get to the Kaaba, yeah. look, make da'a, da 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 <laughs> I'm thinking, bro, my heart's going to do somersaults and backflips. And so like, you felt nice. You're like, mashallah, Allah, my body is bigger than what it is. But it didn't penetrate the heart wow. at that point. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, I've been to Umrah uh, maybe every year in b between now and then, other than COVID period. Oh. But, and alhamdulillah, like every time I go, I feel something. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. There's something, just a little flutter, you know, <laughs> subhanAllah. And then she passed away. So then... You know, I buried her myself, so I put her in the ground. And subhanAllah, man, seeing her go in, white shroud, no gold bangles, nothing, no apartment, no this, no that, in the ground, tight ground, right? I started to think even more now. Okay, this is the final destination. Wow. I'm not taking nothing, I'm not taking my money, I'm not taking everything that I've accumulated. So it got me thinking now. All right. It's good that I've, alhamdulillah, started to get rid of all of the bad uh, addictions. Wow. Okay, now, okay, we're on the zero. How are we going to springboard and do more? SubhanAllah. And then from there, that's when Brothers in Need started. Wow. So we co-founded pretty much immediately because the boys were talking January, February, we were going to do more. 
We're all born Aussies, alhamdulillah. We've got to do a lot. There's a lot of great charities doing a lot of great charity overseas. But at that time, there wasn't really much happening locally. That's right. Everyone's building masajid, orphanages, water wells overseas, stock standard. Yeah, right. But nothing's happening here. Yeah, that's what I think. And that's a huge that's problem. A huge problem. Yeah, because we're not supporting the youth and the people in our community. Yeah. Because, you know, like, you know, it's, it's, it's subhanAllah, it's like, and even in the days when I was involved in Sheikh Fahmi in my yeah. younger days, it's always a, how can we support Syria? How can we support Lebanon? Yeah. How can we support Bangladesh? You know what I mean? Yeah. We need to send money. There's an earthquake. Yeah. Like, can you imagine the community 10 years ago started supporting the community? Where mm. would it be? Yeah. Wallahi. Yeah. In a so, different place. Yeah, man. Allah. We need a lot of infrastructure here. Um, wow. You look at the ACNC website, so all the charities that are re regulated, yeah. the registered ones, they're on the ACNC website. Yes. Yeah. When you look at the charities that send money, there was about 10, six, I think six, seven, we looked at over a five year uh, period, five or six year period. Wow. You're looking at your human appeals, your MATWs, yeah. your Muslim AIDS, the Islamic Relief, all of these charities. 90% was sent overseas. Yes. And we're not talking about a 10 million, I think combined was about 120 million in that six year gap. Wow. Just those charities. We're not talking about all the charities. We're not talking about the Western Union transfers. We're not talking about the money that you take cash. We're not talking about everything else in between. Wow. In that five or six year period, 120 overseas, 10% wow. stayed local. Allahu Akbar. Wow. So that's when we started Brothers in Need. And then from there, we were like, okay, we've got to change the narrative. Tell us a bit about Brothers in Need for the ones yeah. that don't know, inshallah. So for us, once again, contextualizing, you know, all of what we've just said, we wanted to do something locally. We wanted not to just send money abroad. In my opinion, this is the easiest thing to do. Two, three buttons on our website, da, 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 money sent. Easy done. You don't even need to do that now. Recurring. Boom. Every month, thanks for coming. Allah barik fiqh. A lot of the businessmen anyway, businesswomen, that say, listen, don't ask us for our time. <laughs> yeah, we'll give you 50 grand, 100 yeah, grand. Yeah, 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 That's our yeah. time. <laughs> Please. Yeah, yeah. What do you mean come feed the homeless? You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, here's a food for the homeless. Get out <laughs> <laughs> Try to get brothers to come uh -huh. to give four days for yeah, a treat. No chance, mate. Four no days chance. for a treat. Yeah. yeah. No chance. Yeah. Especially somebody who's CEO, That's right. CFO. Yeah. Forget it. Teaches you that time is the most valuable commodity. Mm. So we wanted to find a way to use people's time. Now you look at your corporates. They understand the value of this. Their CSR program, the Corporate Social Responsibility Programs, why do they allocate X amount of hours per year for their human resources to volunteer at good causes? Because they know what that does to the employee. Mm. Makes them productive, makes them grateful, grateful. makes them, aha, all of these feelings, emotions, which means they come back to a company that nurtures that and they want to come back and give more. And they're grateful so for that. Our Prophet said, do all of this stuff, man. <laughs> well, I need someone corporate to tell me, brother, wallah, micro, we've got Microsoft, Salesforce, ComBank, American Express, Good. all these big corporates, they send their HR teams to us. SubhanAllah. Because I'm trying to get the Muslims you know, oh, brother, yeah, inshallah, man, you know, nice smile. You're like, I'll leave very <laughs> I know what that means, you know. <laughs> Thank you. That's right. Yeah, yeah, wallah. But no thanks. So he's like, what's the BSB account number? But I didn't, I didn't want your money. I didn't want your time. Yeah. But you mature up as well over the span of time. Yeah, so true. you realize as well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given every individual a different skill set, different resource. Yeah, yeah. So now I ask the businessman or the businesswoman for money, not time. The person that doesn't have money, that works Monday to Friday, gets a wage, who has time, I'll take their time. So I'll see where all my resources are, wow. a nice little pipeline, and use it all. So that's brothers in need. Amazing. So feeding members of the homeless community, Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, the soup kitchens that we run, the youth programs, the nursing home visits, uh, visiting people with different abilities, uh, whenever there's uh, whenever COVID. So how long has that been now? 2015, man. Wow, so wow. next year will be 10 years. Allah wow. Akbar, man. So that was a defining moment after your grandma's death. Which yeah. Is, that's, 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 that's when, right. So yeah. That's when Brother Need started. Yeah. SubhanAllah. Wow. Just a quick question before we move forward. Mm. So SubhanAllah, what was the last conversation you had with your grandma? And if you had the opportunity to say something to her, what mm. would that be to say to your grandma today? You're asking too many good questions, man. But, like, and, 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 you got to stop with your questions, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep talking about it. I don't like your, your questions, man. <laughs> because I, I, I can see yeah. the conduit there. Yeah. The conduit is your grandma. Because if it wasn't for her death and you sitting in the grave, yeah. undoubtedly you wouldn't have made that difference and brothers and need wouldn't have existed. Mm. Yeah. So the question is, I'm going to say, is that your grandmother, what would you have said to her today now? So Allah, right? So that nurture, that care, that compassion, 
the way she spoke to me, subhanAllah, even though I was yani khalis, right? It was all it was always from a it was always from a a good position. Which right. teaches me, and yani sometimes um, we're Arabs, we know how it is, right? When our kids are good, we're good. Yeah. When they're not good, we change. Yeah. That's why change for. Yeah, Amar! Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> at best, at best, yeah, best right? Yeah. That's on a good day. Yeah. That's if we're fearing a lie, we don't want to hurt Simba, Ummu, and Simba. Allah. So, she, and this is a prophetic trait, by the way. <laughs> right? <laughs> when it came to the Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he sent people to do things and they forget. He wouldn't come down, you know, hard on them. Where'd you go? I told you to do this. Why you take so long for? Wake up to yourself. Are you heck? Are you tired? No, nah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will take it easy. Udu ila sabili rabbika. Udu ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal ma'aidat al hasana wa jadilhum bil latihi ahsan. And so when you invite people to the way of Allah, and really all of our interactions should be that. 100%. Then do so with wisdom and good manners. And if you disagree, disagree in a better way. Mm. Prophetic. That's what she did. Wow. She would not come down into Hamar, into all of this. <laughs> like, she took it easy on me. And I think that after the fact made me think, man, subhanAllah, bro, like I'm going to miss having some good conversations with her. Amen. Mm. All right. So then now, like a lot of the time, I like to, you know, do things on her behalf, oh. make dua on her behalf. Amazing. Yeah, Allah accept on her behalf. To help her Allah. in that moment, because she needs now. She's feeding the homeless. She's yeah, that's right. Yeah. She needs all of this stuff. But she's getting the hasanat, brother. Yeah, hundred percent. Allah subhanahu wa taala, and we ask all our brothers listening today to ask for her rahmat. Amin. 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 Sisters, jazakallah khair. Well, thank you for sharing that, Amazing. because we all of us, I think, have that conduit. We have that human being yeah. that we connect to somehow that gives us change in our mindset and losing that human being. Mm. Sometimes, subhanAllah, just defines yeah. Def the does change. Wallah, Def mm. does that. We hear that so much on the podcast where, you know, somebody, you lose somebody that that you have this sort of emotional connection or that connection that is just so powerful because they sort of straighten you in a way that you never knew how to straighten mm. yourself, you know? And subhanAllah, when you lose that, you think yourself, ooh. Yeah, man. Allah Akbar, may Allah bless her. Yeah. Amen. 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 So from there, you wanted more, looks like. That's right. So for me, man, alhamdulillah, that's when Brothers in Need started. So we started it with about four, uh, there was four of us in total. So I'm one of the four co-founders, alhamdulillah. And uh, it was just about local work. And back then we didn't start it as a proper charity. So oh, wow. we re you reverse engineer it, right? So we didn't come on as directors because we got board experience, director experience. We're just yeah. like, we want to do khair. Yeah. We collect people's money. We created a Facebook page to show people that we weren't pocketing the money. We were distributing what they were giving us. You gave us, we delivered. You gave us, we delivered. Wow. And then subhanAllah, it started to get serious. People were like, we want to donate here. We want to give you this. We want to do all of this stuff. Okay, this is getting serious Abundance. now. Abundance. Uh -huh. More, yeah. Right? La in shakartum, la azidannakum. I mean. So subhanAllah, people wanted to give more. Okay, now we need to do something serious, boys. Now we need to set it up as a non-for-profit, go through the process. And alhamdulillah, within three months, March, June, June, we were registered as a non-for-profit. Wow. I had a brother, accountant, needed to jump on his hair a couple of times to get the work done. He's done it for free, may Allah reward him. Best, I'd need to do late night visits with him. Brother, how are we going with the application? How are we going? Oh, yeah, now different. you won't get it less than six if you've got yeah, like a, a well, team. I mean, no. A year. Yeah, a year Plus. if you're doing it by yourself. Yeah. Oh, I know brothers taking two years to yeah. get it done. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. It's getting tough, especially yeah. when it comes to Islam. That's right. That's right. So, alhamdulillah, man, set her up and then boom. Just started once again for us the prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said and we don't actually think we're saving the world we're not saying this from a humble perspective we don't think we're doing anything really groundbreaking that's so what we're trying to do is implement this hadith the prophet of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the most beloved deed to allah azza wa jal is a consistent one even if it's small yeah. i mean just be consistent i'm not asking your brother go dump a hundred thousand and one off and that's it no, but you know what? Do something regularly. Do a nice little payment plan once a week, once a month, but for the rest of your life. Consistent. Go volunteer your time with your family. We're not asking you to come every week. We're not asking you to come every day. Heck, once a quarter. Make a nice little family gathering, a gathering with your team. Go out and do this particular program. Nice, nice. But be consistent. When you make that intention, be consistent. Nice. It's hard, by the way. It is hard. It is definitely hard. 
Consistency is the heart of everything. Consistency is the heart of everything. But consistency is the success of every business anyway. That's right. That's right. Consistency in service, consistency in quality, consistency yep. in product. We always say that. We always yeah. say consistency. We, we, we use that word. Our staff look at us yeah. like, what is this guy talking about? <laughs> yeah, that? man. We tell, our, we tell our staff, what do we sell here? I say, they say, oh, we sell burgers. I said, no. I said, you sell consistent service, yeah. consistent product. Yeah. That's what you sell. That's all it is. If you can yeah. sell a consistent service and a consistent product, guess what? People are looking for a consistent. That's right. Not only just to the product, but they want a, the consistent service. You can't be going, hey, you going today and tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, sure, what do you want? Yeah, because and then what, what, even yeah. the product doesn't taste good anymore. Of course, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, my heart, yeah, hundred percent. It's about Allah. Yeah. So, Hamdulillah, that's amazing. I mean, and that's Allah. Allah opens the hearts and enlightens us to see these mm. these things. Yeah. And Allah, so you've been going since two thousand fifteen. Wow, two thousand fifteen. Alhamdulillah, man, consistent. Really, nearly nine years. Growth. Yeah, man, nine and a half now. And next year will be our big ten years, man. Inshallah. 2025, Amazing. inshallah. What so take us, take us, take us through your growth. So where we're after that? So my wife reckons I've got undiagnosed ADHD. So my <laughs> brain is flying. While we're talking right now, I'm thinking about Sydney. I'm thinking about Brisbane. I'm thinking about Melbourne. I'm thinking about what I'm doing tomorrow. <laughs> I can my see, brain I can is see. flying. Allah. Right. I can see that. So for me, Allah. it was, uh, what else can we do? So we started off initially with the homeless program, slowly but surely you build consistency, you open up another program, then another program. So they didn't all start straight away. Monthly, then monthly turned to fortnightly, fortnightly turned to weekly, weekly turns to multiple times a week in our program. Once we've got the system in place, the process in place, next project, next project, next project. Mm. So Alhamdulillah, that kicked off. But you off. had that experience, subhanAllah, from your... That's right. So Allah. some transferable skills, right? Yeah, well, so we were calling people to haram once upon a time, and then Alhamdulillah... Allah trying to call them now too. Allah was, Yalla time, Allah money. Was, uh, was giving you get on, get on a different boat, brother. That's it, man. <laughs> Not that boat, it's a different boat. <laughs> That's it. He's all right, this guy. Yeah. Where's, my on, drink? Man. Where's my drink card? <laughs> right. See you, man. My drink card, that water, huh? <laughs> That's it. Alhamdulillah. Allahumma barik. So, what else did we do after that, my brother? So 2015, Brothers in Need. 2019, New Community Project. So Project Quran. Yeah, Allah. Oh. So he, Brothers in Need is more the humanitarian arm, right? Project Quran is more the da'wah arm. So online, people want to know more about Islam. They jump on Google. They can find the free copy of the Bible. You can free this, free that. That's to find a copy of the Quran easy to read, not in Shakespeare language with a modern new website. At that point in time, we couldn't find anything in Australia. Wow. Yeah. Not everyone knows about Dar es Salaam in Coburg. Not everyone knows about Dar es Salaam in Lakemba. Yes, yes. Us Muslims do. Yeah, yeah, but what about a non-Muslim who wants yeah. to know more? Mm. I mean, wow. You think about it like that, right? I put myself in a non-Muslim's shoes. Sometimes we think about what does a Muslim want? Mm. But why am I limiting myself to 3.5% of the population. Australian population? Mm. I'm now missing out 96.5%. 100%. Yeah. So then we started to think about that. Hello. And then we jumped online, couldn't find a good website. We started going through different prototypes. We didn't want to just give a copy of the Quran. We wanted to gift it. So for us, it's about gifting it. And the way you give a gift, you give it in the best possible way. Yeah. When you buy an iPhone or a Samsung, for example, it comes wrapped up, box nice that. box, right? Packaged nicely. And so the same with Project Quran. When we send it out to you, the full shebang. Wow. Wrapped up, matte black box, gold writing, you open it up, nice foam insert, Quran inside, wrapped up, wow. hardcover, ivory pages, easy on the eye to read. Pristine product. Wow. Alhamdulillah. But I bet you it comes with a charger, not like the iPhone. <laughs> no, this one, my brother, <laughs> I'm telling you. So this version, we give it out for free. Allah. The English wow. translation of the Quran, we've distributed 40,000 copies wow. since 2019. Each one for free. The only thing they pay for is shipping. Allah. $10 shipping, Australia-wide. If they can't afford it, we pay for it. Why? Because the last thing you want is someone to jump on the website, order 100, and sell it, or burn it, or get rid of it, or discard it. So we have to find a way on the website mm. to curb multiple orders. What What about the situation? Do you speak to people, scholars, like if they do something wrong with the Quran or things like that? Did you have that because did it's an English it? translation. It's okay. Just English translation, this version. Ah, oh, no Arabic at no all. No Arabic in it. Ah, oh, nice. Uh -huh. Just yeah. English. Just fully English. Just full English. Nice. Nice and simple. Hello. Okay. And so that's so when, 
That's yeah. when it doesn't become uh, grey. That's right. It's easier. Uh, right. Once again, because you're dealing all, with... All our translations are Arabic, English. That's right. Yeah. 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 No, that's all right. I've never actually picked up just a, an English yeah. one, just the English. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's so oh, it's a well. beautiful copy of the Quran. We went through about a year's worth of prototypes to try and find the right version, right? Easy Amazing. on the eye to read. Chop, change, chop, change. Till we got to this final product. Because you uh, want to give the best, you know, gift in the world in the best possible way. Mm. I could save cost and get a 50 cent copy of the Quran from China. Yeah. But it's different. Yeah, you want to get a nice, beautiful one wrapped up, cost us a bit more. Yeah, but they're respected. A bit. And you look at the Google reviews, the reviews online, blah, blah, blah. Oh my God, thank you so much. We didn't expect this to come like that. And you start to respect it more. Mm. Yeah. Right? I wanted to respect it. Of yeah, that's course. right. SubhanAllah. So, Alhamdulillah, that kicked off 2019. And that's a Dawah initiative. So, we actually supply. Uh, a lot of the street dawah movements in Australia, a lot of the masajid, uh, we give them these resources. So when people accept Islam in their mosques, we give them these resources as well. Very nice. Uh, we've given uh, out a whole bunch of them in New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, Fiji. So the surrounding uh, places around Australia. Uh, Christchurch, right after the massacre, we were able to give out. So people, uh, listen to this, right? So when that incident happened, that massacre happened, a lot of non-Muslims were coming to the Masajid, those two mosques, right, uh, to pay their condolences. That's right. But That's the right. gates were closed. That's the right. gates of the Masjid were closed. So they would stand there just like this. You, you could tell that they want to have a conversation with someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a team of us went from Project Quran and we asked the Sheikh, Sheikh, why isn't the Masjid open? They're there. They want to come in. Someone's standing there for half an hour, 45 minutes. They're not just paying their condolences. They want to come in. We want to have a chat with someone. Sheikh, yeah. we got to do, we got to do da'wah. Allahu Akbar. But I don't know you guys. You guys are from Oz. He's like, I need verification. Who do you need ver verification from? Either uh, he knew at the time the Mufti, uh, Sheikh Omar al-Banna or Sheikh Shadi. I said, I know all three of them. Sent them all a response. Sheikh Shadi responded first to him. Done. Wow. These boys, they're good. They're known. No problem. He wow. said, done. Opened up the mosque. Alhamdulillah. Started walking people in, give them a tour. They're probably thinking, you know, what's going on here? They have little training camps. Oh, well, you, you, the non Muslims. You, the non Muslims, you were at the forefront we of We were that. taking them in. So, oh, wow, yeah, right. alhamdulillah, yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent us there. We were just there, you know what? Let's give them some Qurans and that's it. Leave them there and, you know, we'll spend oh, a bit yeah, of time. Yeah, yeah. Subhanahu, they get up. And the Allah. imam there was like, who the hell are these boys? Who's this spinner guy? <laughs> He's coming in, you know, <laughs> wants to come into my masjid and do whatever he wants to do. Oh, I don't know wow. this bloke. Yeah. Wow. He's, He's got a point. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, right? He's got a point. He, does, yeah. he doesn't know you are. Of course. Yeah. I could be, oh. heck, uh, you wow, know, teaching them something. Amazing. Yeah, amazing. And so, subhanAllah, we had a lot of people coming in through the masjid. Uh, we had about four or five of us. Alhamdulillah, a couple people accepted Islam. Uh, some people were taking the women through, put the scarf on, walk them through. This is what we do. We make, we do it. This is why we pray this way. Blah, 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 blah. Allah, like, the last day, we hear that Jacinda Ardern, the Prime Minister, and Prince William wanted to come. Allah. So we're like, listen, we need to get them a copy of the Quran in their hand. So we had to speak to the security team, blah, 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 whatever. Okay, no problem. What does it look like? How, da, 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 da. No problem. Done. Approved. So Alhamdulillah, and you can see it on the social media, the, you know, the... Uh, we'll put it up, inshallah. Inshallah, we'll the distribution the of it. We gave one to Jacinda Ardern. She came in with her hijab, whatever. Prince William, we give him one. He tells us what? This is the first time I've received a copy of the Quran in English. Wow. What? So these guys, once again, like we were saying, he's traveled the world. Subhanallah. Prince this, uh, king this. He's given him a nice, probably gold copy of the Quran in gold writing. He's yeah, tried to yeah, give him yeah. something. It's like, okay, Allah. what is this language? I can't read it. What's it going to benefit me? Ya Allah. Put it on the side. That's right. Beautiful. It looks good. It, 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 very 24 nice. karat gold. Well, maybe you'll leave it over there yeah, on the bookshelf or something. Yeah, put it with my uh, painting. That's right. But for us, when we gave him this version of the Quran, he's like, oh, it's English. Uh -huh. Wow, amazing. When you give da'wah to people, give it to them in their language. Wow. Give it to them in their language so they can understand. The light bulb went on that's there right. now. SubhanAllah. So Alhamdulillah, that's the da'wah project Qur'an. And then through all of those kind of experiences that I've had in life, through brothers and people would start coming to me, Dean, um, we've got this problem with our wife, with our husband, with our child, with our family member. So you started to become an accidental counsellor. So through community, you gentlemen are involved in yes. community. People, <laughs> you know, call yes, your yes. brother, you know, you need to solve my problem. And 
<laughs> what do you mean, brother? I've got to solve my own problems. <laughs> I've got my own issues to worry about. Yeah. Subhanallah. Well, you're right. Yeah. So you become an accidental counsellor. Mm. You start to give advice. But then I started to think about it. Am I the most qualified person to give advice? Maybe from a life experience perspective, uh, there's an element yeah. of relatability. I can add some value there. So that's when I decided to go to TAFE. I've done a diploma in community services. I've done a diploma in counselling the year after. And then... Uh, I created my company. So it's a for-purpose, for-profit company, Invictus Solutions. Nice. And that's where we do the mentoring, the counseling, the workshops. We run our events. Uh, that's and amazing. that started in COVID, man, 2020. Wow. Um, in the heart of COVID. I knew it was just kind of, you know what, I need to formalize the mentoring that I've been doing, the counseling that I've been doing under something. Because I had kind of big plans for this. I didn't want to just, you know, one-on-ones. I wanted to build a team, build a company, right, run programs in Australia, outside of Australia. Obviously, Amazing. go through the process, right? And alhamdulillah, boom, it got parked during COVID. <laughs> Best of Allah, I was like, different plans gonna, for you. Yeah. And yeah. mashallah, you're doing amazing work. A lot of workshops you're doing. I know the Sydney workshop got sold out instantly. Doing another one. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah, it's good It's good to see that, you know, you're, you're pushing the boundaries, opening that envelope. Yeah. That's and, it. And then, wallah, you, look at that, you know, from, and look at the contrast where you were yeah. in total darkness. Yeah. Yeah. To now, so there's like you can say like that middle ground, oh, that middle right. middle thing where, so you're just diving deep, deep, deep into this water. You couldn't see anymore, and suddenly you floated to the top, and now you're flying high, inshallah, towards uh, our beloved, inshallah, inshallah, we get to see him and be with the. Subhanallah, I just want to touch on that. Like you look at the stories of the Sahaba, like Amr and you know when they were all in, they were all in. Either one way or the other. Yeah, that's right. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, like that, that's, the, that's the crazy thing. That some, so many great leaders in our time that have come and gone, they were both, they were like, you know, there's no man that we know on, from, from history that has wanted to kill the prophet. Yeah. Like, he wanted to kill him. Like, right. He went to kill him. He yeah. went actually with him to kill him. Right. So, subhanAllah, to being, the, you know, the, the second most greatest sahaba, you yeah. know, known right. to, to the deen. Yeah. But, subhanAllah, right. just... How things can I mean, Allah I mean, can open your heart and open your sight. I mean, well, yeah. I'm worried around where was he? He was going to kill the Rasulullah. Right. But right. so, so many of our brothers and sisters today, they are whoever might be, inshallah, you know, we can sh- share this message to them. That inshallah, they get some of this message that you don't know, you don't know. Did you fathom, seriously, that, you know, at the age of what, 17 or, was, or, or 20 even, that one day you will be reaching out, you know, with all these projects, Allah, changing people's hearts, you know, 150 shahadas, through Project Quran, Allah yeah. Akbar. And undoubtedly, brothers and sisters, well. Wallah, we need to understand he didn't do it by himself. Of course. And undoubtedly, of I'd, course. I'd love for you to also mention the brothers who've been part of this because it's never ever one person. It's always a team. It's, you know, sometimes somebody stands out, you know, as the sort of the one that stands out for the projects, you know, or you know, he's talking about it. But undoubtedly, there is a prop of brothers who are propping you up. Of course. You know, who are constantly supporting you to stand, stand, stand because if you lose yeah. all those the whole house of cards falls over. 100%. And so I'd love for you to share the brothers that have supported yeah. you. And that, you know, because it's, 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 it, takes, it takes a tribe. 100%. Mm. Alhamdulillah. You're absolutely right. And so, you know, the Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, says, sallam. he who doesn't think the people hasn't thanked Allah. I mean. And so it's always been a team effort with everything that we've done, alhamdulillah, like we were saying before, we've got over 600 volunteers on our books. Allah. That's not talking about the schools, the businesses, the corporates that bring their staff, that bring their students, right? So that number's in excess of a thousand, Allah. right? Allah. Amazing. And alhamdulillah, each of them does their part. So I've got a brother, mashallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him wealth. He says, Dean, listen, I don't have time. Going back to the time thing, mm. right? But it's like any opportunity that comes first, you let me know. Wow. So I've got a I've got a broadcast list that all my WhatsApp groups and broadcast lists, people have asked to be on it. I don't just add people on there, oh, right? Wow. I ask them. Permission. Right? Yes. Because I want the message to be heard. Yeah. I don't want, not, right? Not, like not, my not man, archived. Archived. That's right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Trust me, yeah, I've been yeah, put yeah, on yeah. so many of these broadcast lists yeah. and how many of them have I archived because right. I never asked. That's right. And I never asked and then yeah. and you feel embarrassed to leave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. So uh, there is a broadcast list have asked me, Dean, any time an opportunity comes to do khair, you let us know first. Wow. So what I do, there's about maybe 50 people on there. Inshallah. They get first dibs. One day. 24 hours, first dibs. I'll send out three messages on a broadcast list. Hello. Message one, message two, message three. 90% of the time with these 50 people, 
is collected by the third message of sent out. So my guys, we need da 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 da, you know, and, and the, the 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 theme of the broadcast list is السابقون السابقون أولئك المقربون في جنات النعيم. So there are a special group of people who are the forerunners. Yeah. They're ahead. <laughs> I mean, so they've asked. It's nice. So they're on there, and they get yeah. first dibs. Inshallah, so those amazing. fifty already there, males and females. May Allah reward them. Because yeah. they didn't just say, look, put me on the WhatsApp group with everyone else. They're like, yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> we want first dibs. Inshallah. We want for dosal ala. That's Not everyone wants for dosal ala. We say we want for dosal ala. So you look at the actions. I mean, the actions are what for the one percent. I mean, it's the one percent. Well, if you look at the books of history, right, the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Khutbatul Wada'a, Khutbatul Wada'a, over a hundred thousand people, final sermon. But how many do we know by name? About a hundred, about a thousand, thousand five hundred, if that, yeah. by name. That. So what did this one percent do throughout the time to be remembered in the books of history? They've done what the ninety-nine percent didn't do. Yes. So it's always about the team. Mashallah. So we got the 50 there in the broadcast list. Then the sisters, the brothers got my board, I got the staff, Mashallah. got different individuals, got the schools, got the corporate partners. You got your MCCAs, you got your Talal Yassins, you know, from Salam now. Alhamdulillah, we've been able over the last nine years to build a real strong foundation. So you're absolutely right. It is each and every single moving part in the organization. That makes my job easy. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. And so we always like to thank them and reward them. We amen, always amen. do part of our company. It's about team culture. So team culture, we always reward them. Whether it's fuel cards. So I got some sponsors as well. They say, Dean, here's five, 10, 20 grand. You use it where you think it's best. Didn't happen overnight, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> but these individuals, they tell trusting. me, Dean, we trust why you are buying fuel vouchers for the volunteers. Mm. You're not buying it just because hack, they're your friends or they're your volunteers yeah, yeah, and you yeah. want to hack, <laughs> pump them out. No, we know there's a strategy behind this sure. because you, if you spend five grand on fuel vouchers, you know that you're going to get 50 grand in volunteer hours from them Amen. in the next six months. Yeah. So you've already 10 X. So it's like, we trust you. Alhamdulillah. So, alhamdulillah, I've got those people as well. Amazing. So all of these moving parts make my job easy. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair for sharing. Well, yeah, uh, Allah bless you, subhanAllah. Um, alhamdulillah, like undoubtedly, like your, your journey is a beautiful journey and Allah bless you. Amen. And uh, alhamdulillah, normally we end the podcast on a question. Mm. So More questions. <laughs> <laughs> so we end the podcast and ask our guests to describe themselves. Yeah, In a single concise statement, which says, I am. But before you do that, mm. I want to think about it. And inshallah, I will close the podcast. So before we end, we'd like to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost. I mean. And our audience. I mean. And remind you, inshallah, to subscribe so you don't miss out. Please comment so we can improve. And also please share with others so they can benefit. Because I guarantee you, brothers, there's a lot of jewels. There's a lot of diamonds in this podcast. That inshallah, some of our brothers, we're going through some tough times. Yeah that need this message. Mm -hmm. And please, please give us a rating on our audio platforms. So on that bombshell, an I am statement. I am a work in progress. Oh, Whip. Right. Work in progress. Nice. And for me, it's about that feedback loop. It needs to be constant. It's growth. I make a mistake. I learn from it. I get back up. I move forward. I got it wrong. I change, I adapt, I keep growing, I keep moving forward, and I am a work in progress. Oh, thank you for sharing. Thank you for And may Allah bless all you do in your path and all the brothers and sisters who are supporting the cause. And inshallah, we get to see you again on the podcast with some more amazing outcomes for the Ummah and our brothers and sisters. All around. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.